How to sketch and model off of a photo. Infusion 360, coming up. Creating model from a photo or from a live prototype. How do we do that? Well, first we'll start by starting a sketch, selecting the plane that we're gonna drop it in. And we wanna bring in this photo. So I've got this photo. All right, so this is what I wanna build. Uh, this is based on a product that a really good friend of mine has launched. Uh, they, do, they do electrical devices and USB accessories for mobile devices, things like that. Uh, all their devices rotate, 360 is pretty cool. Okay, so how do I build this in Fusion 360? I get a photo. I could take a photo of the live prototype, or if that's all I have is just this image, I can bring that in. Okay, so in the sketch, I'm gonna bring in a canvas. Type in the S key, type in canvas. Let's find, let's insert the image that I've brought onto my machine and then I'll select where I'm dropping it. Dropping it on the top plane. Now don't worry too much about size and you know getting it right here. Maybe just give a little bit of thought of where the origin should sit. If you know maybe me leaving this where the origin's in the center, that means my three planes will stay here. That's great. That might be a good way to work. Let's try that for now. So I've dropped this in, but more importantly, I need to get this sized. So that's the back. Let's look at the top view. So I could do it on any plane, really, but think about it logically. If this is the top view, then I think it's worth putting that in correctly. Okay, so how do I change where this references? If I right click on the canvas, it's now in the design history, can edit the feature, and it just happens to reference a face or plane. Right, so if I bring up my origin and the corresponding planes, I want that top, drop it in, looks great. So let's reset it, terrific. Okay, so what I wanna do is get the sizing correct. When I look at the top view, that looks good. Maybe I should just flip that around for my own sanity. Great, so now that I have this located in a somewhat logical space, I, it would have been fine as I dropped it in. The one thing that's really important is calibrating. So if I right click on the canvas, this one was a gotcha for me, I missed it a few times. When you right click on the actual canvas, here or in the tree or in the design history, hit calibrate. All right, so what dimensions do you have? If you have the physical prototype, grab some calipers and measure a distance, or if you can figure out a reference dimension to go off of. I know how wide these you know, typical USB ports are, so I could type that in. Even though I'm working in inches, I could type in a metric value if that's what I know. It's gonna just convert that for me. Love that. All right, so my whole image has been scaled correctly and that's great so now i can start sketching okay so there's a bunch of gotchas in trying to sketch this I'll start sketching and immediately I'm, I'm kind of annoyed with how light that background is so if i'm going to try to sketch arcs or circles to match this it's going to be kind of difficult and there is a control on that plug you could of course go back and manipulate your core image or main image, but try this canvas opacity to bring, uh, to bring it up or bring it down to make it easier to work with. Okay, so now I wanna start sketching and I could use a series of circles um, or arcs and some arcs to be aware of or circles to be aware of. One that I wanna try is using this three point circle. And what this allows me to do is kind of select different points and allow me to kind of orient this circle. And I can zoom in. How accurate do you need your model to be? If this is just a nice representation, you're dragging this in almost as a reference item, right? It's kind of background, then you know, just close enough, you can just kind of quickly throw this together. If I wanted higher accuracy, I would probably opt for a higher res image. Maybe take this one again so that I can come in, get really close to these edges and match them as closely as possible. All right, so I'm just using a series of circles and arcs for this uh, particular shape. 
dragging them to fit, some things you can use to kind of keep you uh, locked in. So if you like this location, you can select it and fix it. That can help you anchor. So now when I'm dragging this, it's not going to mess up all the additional entities. So again, if I like this location, a fix can be helpful when trying to get this located exactly where you want it to go. So I just used a command and I happen to be out of it. If I right click and drag up, that's a good way to repeat. So without even thinking, I can just kind of drag up or right click and drag up and it's immediately in that same command that I've been using previously. So I could spend some more time here, but what I've got is, um, you know, kind of that overall shape. It's looking pretty good and we can start to extrude this. Now you could come in and trim all these entities if you want to, um, to make it a nice clean sketch. I've got all these kind of messy entities overlapping, but Fusion does not require that. Um, I can, you know, extrude this value. So I'd probably need to know, you know, this depth value from either measuring the prototype or um, referencing somewhere else. Now that I've extruded, I'm going to just drag on um, a different appearance. I hit A on the keyboard and I'm going to drag on you know, a, a nice glossy white plastic for now so I know what I'm working with. And what I want to do is turn off the canvas and maybe I could start cutting those interior holes out. Uh, use the canvas again. Next what I want to do is cut out these shapes. I can do those very quickly. I could start a new sketch. So I like to separate my cuts from my extrusions when possible. Um, there are uh, kind of exceptions to that rule where when you do it all in one sketch that can be very friendly. I've learned over the years it's advantageous to separate the extrudes from the cuts. Makes easy, it makes it easier to edit it all later as well as to make sense of your feature history. I'll dimension that. And now, if I were to copy this, Control C, let's just assume these are the same. I've got another one, drag it on, same dimension, do it again. Uh, a pattern would be smart if I know these dimensions between them. That'd be a great way to do this, a uh, sketch linear pattern. What I want to do is extrude these cuts. Okay, so I have these three. Okay, so I'm going to do all three cuts. Now, do I want these coming from the bottom? In this case, that's not what I wanted. I actually, I kind of have it oriented in a strategic way, and this would be fine to accept it, but what I'm going to do is just for practice is how do you start from a different face? So I'm going to go up and do from an object for the start, and even though this is sketched on the bottom, it's now going to reorient itself, and it's going to cut going down. I love that capability, the ability to kind of reassign where it's starting from. It's very helpful. Great. Let's turn off the canvas. All right. So we're getting closer. What if you want to round off these top edges? I'm going to hit F for fillet. And one fillet, I, one tool I love, I use a lot is selecting the face. Now, if I know the reference value, the right one, and I'm dropping that in, that looks good. Let's Let's bring it up just a little bit so that we see it. Okay, perfect. When I accept this, I now actually didn't want these interior holes filleted yet. Now, I could go back and just select all those edges, but if you want to come back and kind of remove any additional selections, select them, hit delete on your keyboard. I love this infusion, the ability just to remove fillets and it resolves and repatches that surface. It's awesome. Such a cool time savings. All right, so that's how you can use canvases in Fusion 360 to rebuild from photos or reference images that you might have. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.